What's going on, y'all? So we're back with another episode of Jaywalking. I believe this one is going to be number five. Um, got on the weighted vest. We're doing weighted vest miles today. And I'm just trying to cap off the day. So I figured, why not do another video, right? Um, so, something pretty cool happened to me this morning. Um, I was at work in the kitchen getting what I eat for breakfast together and uh, one of the guys I work with stops me and he's like, hey man, do you do like biking? Like, you know, do you ride a bike to work or something? And I said, no. And uh, I was like, I, I run, I do a lot of running. And he looks at me and goes, yeah, I can tell you really look like it which felt pretty damn good because um, because of all the issues I had with weight and the struggles I went through and all that. And I finally got to a place, personally speaking, where I'm comfortable with what I eat. I don't have to go crazy tracking really anymore. Um, occasionally I will, like, if I'm, like, really craving, like, peanut butter or, you know, like, I'm going to add, because I got this, um, honey alternative, it's called Unhoney, um, and that is basically, like, straight from dandelions, there's no, you know, it doesn't go through a bee to create the honey and tastes almost just like it. It doesn't have that like off-putting aftertaste that I used to get from honey, so I really enjoy it. But if I'm going to use something like that, that's a little more calorie dense, I'll usually like weigh it out, portion it out somehow. Um, but I've been able to eyeball a lot of that kind of stuff a lot more now and it feels good because I know that all the activity I do now and because I've used the entire first year where I lost the weight as a learning experience on like portion control and what you know visually what portion sizes of a lot of foods look like it's helped me out a lot um, I've done a lot of research learning like what what foods will really fill me up how to go about eating out because let's be honest like you know, I don't want to say you need to do that kind of stuff but Every once in a while, yeah, let's just, how can I put this? Sometimes you're going to be in a position where you don't have a choice and you got to grab something on the run. And now I know that if we are going to be going out, that I will maybe eat like a big salad before we go somewhere that's not going to have salad. Or something along those lines. When we go to a local pizza place, it's called um, Mellow Mushroom. When we go there, they do a vegan pizza. They have the vegan cheese, the whole nine. It's a t it's a regular pizza joint. They just happen to have crust that's just like naturally has vegan ingredients in it. So I don't have to worry about that. And then they have the vegan cheese. So they just put that on it instead of regular cheese. So I'll, uh, when we go out to a place like that, I'll typically get a salad beforehand so that I can eat a pretty big salad, which is going to be like nothing calorie wise. I mean, of course it does have some calories, but the big difference is I don't get a ton of toppings. Um, I won't get, you know, 
vegan cheese on it. Um, I'll get the lowest calorie dressing and rather than me taking like the whole ramekin of dressing, I'll just take like my fork and you know dip a little and like kind of just drizzle a little on as I eat and typically by the time I'm done my salad I've only used maybe a third of the dressing so I'll eat like a really big salad before the pizza comes out because I know that if I do it that way it's gonna stop me from wanting to eat half of a large pizza to myself because there's I, I could easily I've done it before I can eat a large pizza myself but if I have a nice size salad beforehand I'll eat two slices and I'll be good um, so it's it's kind of like I mean honestly thinking about it, it's like padding for your stomach so that you're not going to go overboard it's just I'll naturally end up getting more full off of way lower of an amount of calories because if I didn't do that again I'd be polishing at least four slices of it so half of a large like right there for dinner and that can we can turn a dinner that would typically be six seven hundred calories into 1200 that easily because you think about it the pizza we get is typically i don't know 300 calories a slice around there's no way for me to like weigh it and know all the ingredients like I, I, there's no way for me to know all the all of that stuff and because of that uncertainty having the salad beforehand to fill me up a lot also helps so it's just like you're naturally going to eat lower a lower amount of calories um but going off of that they did research and like big peer-reviewed studies on this they took two groups of people and they had one group go and eat at a buffet just let them eat whatever and then they had another group do the same eat at a buffet but they also made them eat a big salad before they ended up eating at the buffet and I believe it was on average the people that ate the salad beforehand just naturally ate between five I want to say between five and seven hundred calories less than the people who did not eat the salad beforehand now think about it it makes sense because your stomach's full it's full off of like leafy greens onions tomatoes lots of micronutrients so you're getting a lot of nutrition there as well and it's not covering it in toppings is is the key so like you know if you're doing something like that you know you're going to be eating something that's delicious after the salad anyway sacrifice a little bit don't get a salad that's like, you know, a cob that's going to have bacon and cheese and, you know, an assortment of seeds and covered in ranch dressing. Because you're all you're doing is turning that like wedge of iceberg lettuce, which would have been 50 calories if you just ate that into something that's 700 and then after that you're eating your dinner which is going to be another five to seven hundred so you know i like to provide the tips and advice on how i maintain and it's little things like that are how i do it um, between 
that and cutting out my like liquid calories almost entirely have been two of the biggest game changers for me like well but that and combined with the fact that we rarely eat out now we may go like once a week if that we're even trying to cut that back um it's just you know we know a local there's a indian place near us that has just ridiculously good food and probably like 90 percent of their menu is vegan um they have vegetarian stuff too but man this stuff is good and like their um shot dishes are typically like $4.99 or something like that and then they have like their tiffins and it's just they're they're all really cheap so it's really easy to go overboard there but this is a method that I'll use if I'm gonna eat at a place like that because just because it's vegan does not mean that it's healthy. Beyond Meat is vegan, but it's far from healthy. There's like just tons of saturated fat in it. The vegan cheese that I mentioned, it's vegan, but it's not healthy. But the thing is, is once in a while, in moderation, it's okay. I know that the amount of activity I do now, I run every morning. Um, and then like now after work, after dinner, I'm out getting, as we speak, I'm at 1.9 miles. So my activity level is going through the roof. Um, so that like mixed in with my TDEE, total daily energy expenditure. I mean, I'm probably between 2,500 and 3,000 calories I'm burning. Um, and I only eat, currently I'm at around 2,000 because I wanted to just shed a few pounds from, you know, the holidays. So I'm slowly shedding that off but i also say we do go out to eat on on a friday i know that i'm in a deficit all week to the point where that one dinner is not going to impact me it's not going to kill my progress and that brings now that I think about it, that brings another point. When you're on your weight loss journey, um, word of advice is the following. This can be huge. If you're weighing yourself, a couple of tips. You should be to track your progress there's nothing wrong with weighing yourself on a scale. A scale's not the patriarchy. A scale did nothing to hurt your feelings. All it does is measure. So, it's a good tool to use to track your progress. But, if you're going to weigh yourself, make sure when you do, you're doing it at the same time, and of course I'm getting a spam call, make sure you're doing it at the same time every day. Um, for instance, if you wake up in the morning and you use the bathroom and then you jump on the scale and the next day you want to weigh yourself again, Make sure you do it at the same time. Don't weigh yourself first thing in the morning. Use the bathroom. 
jump on the scale, and then the next day, jump on the scale after dinner, because you're naturally going to weigh more. You have a body that is then full of food, so it can really set you back, make you feel like you're not progressing at all. It's a word of advice. Um, the other thing is, your body weight fluctuates every day, so... Another tip is use your median body, body weight. And what do I mean by that? Take your weight each day. So weigh yourself for seven days. And then on the seventh day, add those numbers up and divide it by seven. That's going to be your average body weight for the week do it as a weekly thing take your measurements as a weekly thing another one that people will do is they'll use the, no the lowest number throughout that week um, personally I like um, I just like math so I would rather do the math and just you know weigh, add them all up and then divide it by seven so I know that way but we'll just say as as a person who started their journey three years ago we're getting closer and closer to three years ago got down to where I wanted to be in a year and then has managed to keep it off for two I'm not an expert but I mean, I got to be doing something, right? Right? Um, yeah. So those are some more tips and advice. It was a nice little chat. We'll uh, wrap this one up here. We're at 17 minutes, so, you know, I don't know. Feels good. Um, until the next one, later this week, I'll catch you all then. Uh, if you think I'm, if you think I've earned your time, hit that like, and if you really think I've earned it, and you'd like to see more, go ahead and subscribe, join the One Man One Year 150 crew, Team 150, you can find me on Strava at Jason Gardner, hashtag One Man One Year 150. And you can follow me on Instagram at one man when you're 150. Till the next one, y'all.